All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Enhanced Tart Bayfront Trail Improvement and Extension Project second community event. Um, we're really glad to have you guys here with us tonight, and we're excited to share our feedback that we received at our February community engagement events, as well as show you some refined concepts that we've came up with and take you through an activity. So we'll start by going through a project review to let you know how we got here and where we're at. We'll share our February engagement findings, and then we'll also share our refined trail concepts with you that reflect the feedback that we received in February. Additionally, we will do an activity, as I mentioned. So what this activity will focus on are prioritizing our values regarding trail features, the values guiding the project, different portions of the trail and which ones are your favorites, and then experiences that you would like to have on the different portions of the trail. So that's the layout for how our meeting will run this evening. And at, if, at any time you have any questions that come up, please feel free to drop those in the chat. And Jess or I will go ahead and answer those for you or make sure to take note of them so that we can get back to you with an answer. So doing just a summary of the project and some of the partners in the project and where we've started from, TART Trails states that their mission is to provide and promote a trail network that enriches people and communities of the greatest tra greater Traverse region. And their values- Watch this downstairs on my computer. Have fun. That they promote, um, sorry, just one moment, are to have access, collaboration, connection, sustainability, recreation, and health. And their overall vision in the work that they do is to have happy, active people making connections through a world-class trail network. And that's something that we're hoping to carry through with this project as well. So a reminder of our project intent overall is what we'd like to see come from this improvement and extension project is an increased pedestrian safety and user enjoyment through the enhancement of two and a half miles of trail, allowing it to better serve the needs of all people. And as we mentioned previously, the budget that we have set for this started at eight and a half million dollars. And as the project has grown and changed and we've come up with new amenity ideas, and the Murchie Bridge and additional comments that we've received from the public. This is something that will shift with time and increase, but this is where our starting point was. And also in conjunction with this project, the Bike and Mobility Action Plan is also happening. So this is something that's building alongside that and they are growing together. So to start off, to with sharing what we heard in February, we met with four different focus groups that we felt were prime stakeholders for this project. And those included the Grand Traverse Band, MDOT, the Watershed Center, and the Delamar Hotel. And some of the key themes that we saw emerge during these discussions were starting with water quality. So this was something that came up through multiple groups that we spoke with. And ideas were surrounding pervious pavement, and potential rain gardens throughout the area as means of stormwater mitigation. Additionally, educational signage came up multiple times, and this could look like things such as native history and language, environmental education, current events, watershed information, information about the Bay just in general, and then ideas surrounding green infrastructure. Another prominent theme that we heard was art and culture. So sculptures, murals, interactive displays, could be a lot of different things. And amenities were another uh, theme that came up multiple times. And this could include things such as lighting, trash cans, recycling areas, water refill, pet waste, and bike repair stations. And then finally, in terms of the natural landscape and something that we wanna work to preserve are increasing native plants, keeping and adding more trees in the area and protecting them wherever possible, riparian zones and climate resiliency overall. So we're continuing our discussions with these different focus groups to have them grow with us as the project develops. But these are what we heard initially at our time speaking with them in February. 
And along with those focus groups that we met with last month, we also had public engagement events. So the same as what we're doing tonight, we had one of these virtual events on February 15th. And then on the 16th, after we met with all of our focus groups, we had meetings with the downtown stakeholder portion as well as the peninsula stakeholder portion. But again, they were open to all. And the pictures here show general turnout and what these activities looked like at our previous event. So to give a synopsis, we had lots of good conversation and we had maps printed out as you can see here on the tables. And the activity was for people to get talking with each other, to go around and use pens and paper to write out all their ideas, concerns, desires, anything that came to mind along the stretch of the project. So that's what you see here. And what we did from this data gathered is we put all of it into one spot and synthesized it. So we came up with key guiding themes that we felt really captured the ideas that people shared in different portions of the trail. And that's what we'll take a look at here on this next stretch of slides. So overall, just what we heard, and it's broken up into the different segments of the trail so you get a zoomed in view of what people are saying and the information gathered. So the green and yellow sticky note looking stickers, those were pulled from the online mural that we had. So this is a way that people could interact virtually before and after the event to share ideas, to put really any ideas that they had onto the map, even if they weren't at the in-person event. And then the chat bubbles that are more tan, those are ones that we pulled from those hard copy maps that I shared on the previous slide. So um, for this first stretch here, we have starting at the very west end of the project, uh, some feedback themes that we found here were landscaping and tree shade. So that was something that came up a lot across these different concepts that, I mean, these different themes and comments that you saw here, those were the guiding ones for this portion. And especially calling out a willow tree that begs for a trail amenity and how having landscaping that provides shade is important for this section of the trail. And we did wanna to mention too, that we know that the parking lot, um, the West End Beach RB parking lot, this one is eroding. And this is something that the city is working on separate from the scope of this project, but it's something that we're taking into consideration as we progress with our plans here as well. So moving along to our next stretch of trail, we approach the volleyball courts. And just as a reminder, these maps were taken from our previous engagement sessions. So they're not the refined ones that you'll see in just a bit here, but these were the ones that people provided feedback on last time. So as I said, we have the volleyball courts here and the comments that we saw presented within this segment focused on themes such as bike facilities and stormwater mitigation. So we heard that increasing bike racks in this area was important and that maintenance for stormwater, we didn't wanna see salt on the trails um, or concerns with what might happen with stormwater mitigation as extra pavement is added to the area. So those were our prime focus themes that we pulled from comments received from the community on this portion. Moving along still, we enter the West Beach parking lot area. And this portion, as you may or may not be aware, there is going to be a restroom added just on the base, base side of the parking lot. So that's something again that you'll see on our updated plans a bit later in the presentation. But based on the comments we received here, we heard that traffic separation, art and culture were the pressing themes that came out of this. So art additions could be maybe interactive, plaques with interesting Traverse City facts, there's opportunities for cultural sculptures. And I know there is a mural that'll be coming up over in Clinch Park that already exists. So building off of that with more cultural art in this area would work well as, as well with, as that. And then finally the traffic separation. So pulling the different pathways and be, having them divided by the West Beach parking lot was something that came up in this section that we will address when we show you our refined concepts. Continuing on, we move into the Clinch Park area. 
And overall, we heard that safety and trail layout were some of the pressing themes of comments that came up in this section. So we want to have people feel safe when they're traversing this area. And some of those ways of doing that would be lighting, maybe bike speed limits, as mentioned with the splash pad area getting quite busy at certain times of the day. And the trail layout of bringing this up towards the bay. And we have a comment about why the existing pathway here isn't being utilized as shared. And I wanted to make a note that that's something that will have an answer to you when we go through these refined concepts in a bit here. All right, so we're still going along. And here we have ease of traffic merging as our leading theme that came up. So as we go from our separated bike path and pedestrian path into a shared use pathway, there were questions that came up regarding the crossover here. So that's another thing that we've made changes to the plans and reflected that. So we'll show you that again soon here, but that was our biggest area of note for this section. And we've made changes because of your feedback. So we're excited to share that with you. And then here in the Delamar portion, this is where you can see we received a lot of comments, a lot of good feedback. So it gave us a lot to work with. And um, something that came up were the designations along the Murchie Bridge, as well as ensuring that the sh proposed shared space is very safe. So those were our guiding focus points as we went through and refined our concepts. And overall, we have kind of a mixed bag of different ideas that people shared here. But what we want to do is really enhance the safety that people feel by being away from the road. And what we're proposing here by having that in the Delamar parking lot, we think that there's the opportunity for that to provide that safety and really enhance the area. And there's note of some people that say they already default to this. So that was encouraging to hear that there's there's some evidence that this might work out great. So we're excited to keep exploring that option there with the Delamar Hotel. Moving along, we go past the Haggerty Center and the Senior Center. So guiding themes we heard were support for separation from the road. So really pulling this away wherever possible. And then as we merge into our mixed use trail in front of the Senior Center, amenities came up as a great idea for this spot because of all the existing trees, and just the scenic portion of this route. So things like picnic tables, benches, preserving the trees and providing amenities there came up quite a bit as well as keeping that separation from the road. So as we keep going along, we get into the intersection of where we go from Front Street onto Peninsula. So some of the pressing themes that we heard here were really having a crosswalk at this intersection, providing a sidewalk, maybe down the road, a curb and gutter. But overall, it was resounding that traffic calming needed to happen as we do enter this residential zone. So things such as enforcing the 25 mile per hour speed limit and encouraging that and really getting people to go back to the feeling of this is a residential road. So that was a big theme that we heard for this portion. And at our previous engagement, as you can see here, Peninsula was just shown as that there will be a trail here eventually in the future, but we didn't really have those details, the what's and ifs, ands, and buts about it. So what we'll have today is a little bit more of some information on what that may look like and some alternatives to take a look through. So we will share that with you soon. And then moving along Peninsula, again, that residential feel was one of the most prominent themes that we heard come out of comments here. And there was a lot of support for continuing this connectivity of the trail through to Eastern. And people um, did also really want to see this trail on the bay side if possible. So that is another thing that we see on the next slide here. So having a shore side, bay side path and really building for the future. So putting infrastructure in on Peninsula Drive here is something that as traffic increases, by pedestrians and bikes, this will be something that will last well into the future and can be used in a comfortable way for many, many years to come. So that was a goal that was expressed here and that continuing the road, the trail down Peninsula and ideally on the Bayside. 
And then here we reached the end of our trail segment. And as I mentioned, people really did want to see that continuation of pedestrian and bike trails. So taking us right up to Eastern and building for the future as we continue to see usage go up. So overall, for those of you who attended and participated in any way, um, your feedback was fantastic and it really was able to help us refine our concepts and take into consideration all of the different thoughts that you as the people living and using the trail know best. So it was really helpful having that from you all. And what we've tried to do is based on those comments received, we've revised our trail concepts to reflect many of the desires and concerns of the community that were voiced at our February events. So what we'll get into now is sharing those refined concepts that I've been mentioning. So this will be the part of the concepts that are new and based off of our previous comments from you all. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, as we go through these refined design concepts, I do want to highlight that uh, the designs, whether they do change based on the feedback we hear or they had to stay the same, uh, this has been a very challenging uh, balancing act to create a world-class trail system here while also being uh, respectful of the environment, um, the waterfront area, trying to stay away from the road, but also not impacting the shoreline too much as well. And then where we can also preserving trees. So as you look at this, keep all that, those different many factors in mind. And so, you know, if we do one, we may have to get rid of another. So there's always um, pros and cons to the reason why we have this design layout. And again, we do welcome feedback uh, as we walk through these. So as you see on this slide, we're starting at West End Beach parking lot and we're continuing east and not much has changed from the previous one, with the exception of showing the updated MDOT design along Grandview Parkway. So MDOT is planning to change the um, crosswalk at Division Street here from the east side to the west side, creating a safer movement for non-motorized users. And so that will um, be a great significant improvement in getting connectivity to those neighborhoods to the south and getting on the TART Trail. In addition here, we're kind of refining what those amenity boxes could be, you know, uh, highlighting that this is a good area, a good place for bike racks and benches along the shoreline in these sections. And then as we approach the volleyball courts, uh, we, we learned that uh, additional volleyball courts are going to be uh, happening uh, along that stretch. So one of the comments was if we could go around the uh, row of trees adjacent to the existing volleyball court. And so as we found out that information, that's really not realistic to keep it, keep the trail further away from the road. So we do have to maintain the stretch a little bit closer to Grandview Parkway. And then as we get closer to the volleyball courts, we talked about, hey, the sidewalk might be too close to the volleyball courts. And so as you see on this screen, we have a, a secondary line of possibly moving that sidewalk further south so that there's more room for those amenities, whether they're benches and areas for people to stay and linger and enjoy the, the games that are happening on those these volleyball courts. So that's what you see here. Um, it would cause for relocating or planting new trees in this section. And that is one of those balancing acts that we're considering uh, is where can we keep and preserve those trees and where do we have to maybe relocate or plant new ones. Another idea is also providing benches and picnic tables here um, to enjoy the volleyball courts and just a resting spot. Uh, there's the future restrooms that are coming in that we learned during last month's uh, engagement. So knowing that those are going to be installed, this area is probably going to increase in the non-motorized users and traffic. So one of the reasons why we decided to separate out the cycle and pedestrian trails here is for one, the cars in the parking lot may overhang the curb. And so we wanna allow space for that and not feel crunched with bikers and pedestrians, as well as the increase, maybe 
lines during congested times using the restrooms and lingering on those sidewalks. So we want to create that safe environment and keeping those two train systems like where possible. And then as you see here, as we start to enter into Clinch Park, there's opportunities for some art displays, um, whether those are permanent or semi-permanent. Um, or even informational areas talking about uh, the native history in this area, the bay, environmental um, concerns, and just educational opportunities for public to enjoy. And as we get through um, Clinch Park here, you'll see our design is going through and winding through. And one of the items that we recently learned is for the Bijou Theater, that secondary existing trail there uh, is really just used for back of house operations. So we learned by park staff that we can actually get rid of uh, that section of uh, sidewalk today. Um, so that will kind of balance that additional sidewalk that we're adding with the blue highlighted section uh, by removing this portion and also giving more of that green space area for other item for other activities to happen in the park. And as we continue through Clinch Park, uh, this is where the trail gets the most congested. So we do widen the pedestrian trail to be 10 feet wide as well as with, with the 10 foot wide cycle trail. So this area, we anticipate a lot more people navigating through and going to different destinations. And for that reason too, we have a pattern that is similar. If you've ridden on 8th Street, um, you'll see that we have a scoring pattern that kind of lets the bike user know that they're approaching a pedestrian crossing and to slow down and be aware and so that they can have time to stop and not have a conflict with a pedestrian. We also want to keep in mind too that we have the tunnel that crosses Cass Street right here and there's a lot of traffic that goes through that tunnel and comes into the park. So we wanna be cognizant of that and make the users aware that, hey, there's more traffic in this area, please slow down. There'll be a lot more signage um, out there today to also enhance that and make users aware. Um, again, just continuing that theme of art and garden features, um, as we get into some of those areas where the landscaping gets smaller, it does get a little bit harder to maintain. So that's a great opportunity that we can incorporate more native plants and landscaping that can be taken care of and uh, celebrating the space. Oh, can you go back one more? Sorry, and I just wanted to note too that uh, as we get closer to that pinch point where we do have to neck down to a shared use trail, we did eliminate that crossing. Uh, the original intent for that crossing of the cycle and pedestrian was we wanted to have those cyclists, I believe, further away from the road. Um, and so that created that crossing. So we did adjust that for that, for um, diminishing that other conflict crossing. And then as we get to Murchie Bridge, uh, we do still have the proposed bridge idea that sounds really great to add extra capacity to cross uh, Murchie Bridge safely and uh, allow users to have a more enjoyable experience of the bay. One thing that we did learn is there was a joint planning and city commission meeting on Monday and um, some of the commission were concerned about the cottonwood tree right here that's really large and um, very important staple here. So we will be looking to preserve that tree that's existing there and seeing what kind of ways we can go around or meander um, around that tree with the bridge. So that's going to be one of our, our challenges uh, for this section as well. And then during our focus groups with the band, Grand Traverse Band, we talked about this area being a significant uh, native American history point uh, with the, where the bay meets the Boardman River. And so this is a good area for an informational plaque uh, to celebrate that history and the significance of this area. 
And as we approach Delamar, uh, as you can see for Front Street, MDOT is proposing an improved crossing um, as well as a signal here at Front and Grandview Parkway. So this whole interaction here is going to change completely. Uh, we, are, we'll, we will be providing crossings here for pedestrians, so you don't have to go down and around and underneath Murchie Bridge, which we know sometimes is out of commission if water levels are too high. Um, this will create that safe environment for users to cross and continue south on the former uh, rail uh, street uh, and trail there as well. So it's a great connectivity opportunity. Um, and then here, as we continue to work with Delamar and explore our different options here, um, we do know the right of way really gets narrow in this stretch. And so it's either pushing the trail right up against the uh, road, which users know there's a lot of people that travel on this road. It does go pretty fast vehicular traffic wise, and it doesn't feel safe. So having that shared parking lot zone um, where all users, if you are a visitor of the hotel and you have to drive to the back or the back of house operations of the hotel, you'll see that there will be signage to understand that this is a different area. Um, and then we have some hatch work, hatching that's happening right here to show that this area is going to look and feel different. It's going to tell every user that, hey, this is different. I need to be more aware and that we're going to be sharing this space. So we do have some examples on the next slide. Um, but before we get to that, just continuing east to Sunset Park, you'll see we continue to improve connectivity to the different parks and amenities in the area as well. And we're continuing the 16 foot wide trail system here through the Hagerty Center and pushing it away from the road where it feels safe and adding plantings to discourage um, goat pass or social trails closer to the road um, because we wanna get those users further away from the trail. So here are some examples of the wound nerf that we're talking about for the Delamar. And as you can see, we have examples from the Netherlands, Bagley Street, Detroit, and Georgetown, uh, DC. So on the lower left is the Bagley Street in Detroit. Uh, this is a shared use space completely. So for parking, for bikers, walkers, and drivers, this whole area is changed. And so they have brick pavers along the edges for the parking uh, to signify where people can park on the road or shared space. And then you see the scoring of the road too, it's different. It's showing that, hey, this space is different and acts and operates differently than a normal road. Um, so it tells people to be a little bit more aware of their surroundings. In other areas, uh, brick pavers are used uh, stamped concrete and stains are used as well to delineate uh, those different spaces and understanding that this is a different use of this space. So we just wanted to kind of emphasize that this area, it's not a road, a true road, right? So the traffic there is very different. Um, it's just access for back of house operations with the hotel use and then the occasional uh, driver that may be parking in the back part of the hotel. And as we continue east and we approach the senior center, this is where we again have a balancing act, um, as well as understanding that the usage kind of uh, de decreases in this area. So we go from the 16 foot separated trail system to a shared use 12 foot wide trail. And that's partially to preserve those existing mature trees uh, along the center, senior center parcel and then also giving opportunities to have amenities such as benches and picnic tables to enjoy this space and interact. And then as we continue east and hit the Bayshore Hotel, we do run into an area where there's just not a lot of opportunity to push the trail further away from the road. So unfortunately, it will be closer to the road, but it will be wider. So it should give opportunity if you want to still stay further away from the road, you can potentially do that as long as you're watching out for other users on the trail. And then as we get to 
Peninsula Drive, you'll also see the improvements that MDOT is proposing as well. Um, there will be a crossing with a refuge median uh, along East Front Street here, and they're improving the crossings and connectivity so people can actually get to the trail or get to wherever they're trying to go here. And so we think that that's a great opportunity um, and great addition uh, for this section of road. And here we start with the peninsula alternatives. So our first alternate is limiting our impact to the road and creating uh, bike lanes. We do have a lot of challenges here. Uh, we have a narrow right of way, um, about 66 feet, and it does vary. It can be around 72 feet in certain areas, but there's not a lot of room to um, really change too much here without significantly impacting uh, residential properties. And so here, this first alternative we're showing just a simple bike lane adjacent to the travel lanes. So on the left, you'll see kind of our plan view of what is, is ex existing today with 11 foot travel lanes in each direction and a paved shoulder that's about three to four feet wide, and then switching to keeping 11 foot lanes and adding a four foot wide travel or bike lane and then having a paved shoulder on the off side of that. And that will carry through to we get to Eastern. And so you'll see some gaps here at Eastern Avenue and as well as at Peninsula and Front Street. We have a gap not connecting the trail systems and that's intentional. Depending on which alternate we decide to go with, it will impact how that will look and feel and connect. So we are saving those for when uh, an alternate is selected. Starting our, our next alternate two is actually showing a 10 foot wide shared use path on the bay side. So we will have we will be shifting the road to the south in the right of way line or in the right of way and creating that 10 foot wide shared use trail with a three foot buffer between the travel lane and the trail system. And so this will be carried out and there will be some challenges. Again, some items are being weighted to design further. So we heard loud and clear at Garfield and Peninsula Drive that traffic calming is needed at that intersection. So that is going to be addressed once we decide on the design that is going to happen for Peninsula Drive. So it will operate and function differently and it should slow down the traffic here. Um, for the residential. And we'll continue that through to Eastern as well, and there will be connectivity and opportunity to continue uh, for future along Eastern to connect to the existing sidewalks that start at Milliken Road. Our last alternate is very similar to the second one, but with the change of having curb and gutter. And so we'll still maintain that shared use path on the base shore side with a four foot buffer and then having 11 foot travel lanes. Uh, this will again shift that road to the south in the right of way, um, but it will still maintain be maintained in the right of way as well, but to make room for that 12, 10 foot shared use path. And same idea, you know, we'll continue this and we'll make those improvements at the intersections once we decide on which theme we can use. Okay, so after we've seen those refined concepts that Jess went through, what we want to do is give you all an opportunity to voice what your priorities and values are in terms of this project. So we want to know what this project means to you, what values you think you should be at, should be at the forefront of this effort and what experiences are important to you along the trail. So in this activity, what we're gonna do is ask you questions regarding trail features, portions, values, and experiences. And in order to do this, what we're gonna ask you to do now is open up a new tab on your device and enter the link and code provided up at the top of this screen. So that link will be www.menti.com and then it will prompt you to type in this code here. So you'll then type in 29326982.
So I'll give everybody a minute to get onto that new tab. If you have any questions, I'll be monitoring the chat so I can help you out in whatever way you need. But what you'll wanna do is go to that website and then type in the code. So we'll give you a little bit of time to get that set up. I'm seeing some thumbs up, hearts, that's a good sign. And What's nice about what we'll do with this activity here is it's a way for us to engage with you all since we're not in person, but you'll be able to answer survey questions that are interactive. And then we'll have another activity in store for you after that that's similar to our mural activity that we did last month. So I'll leave this code up for a bit longer here just to make sure everybody's able to get on there. I see we have a question mark that came up. Um, if anybody has any questions, I will take a look in the chat here and help you out. But essentially, we'll be transferring over to a different website for the rest of the presentation here. So you'll be straying from Zoom, but keep it open. But you'll just be starting on this new tab. I'm going to continue on to the next slide, but give a shout out if you're having any issues with it loading or getting signed on here. So what you'll see here on your Mentimeter website is this same slide will be popping up. So what you what you should be seeing right now, it's going to ask you to rate each feature on a scale based on its importance to you. I'm sorry, that should say on a scale of one to 10. So how it works here is it goes from not important to you on the far left and then extremely important on the far right. So what you'll do is you can take these bars here and slide them based on their importance to you. So I can see here in the corner once we have participants responding. So I will give you all some time to go ahead and answer this question and then we'll continue on. And as you can see, as it as people start to respond, it will share the averages that we're coming up with. And if this isn't something that's showing up on your screen, don't worry because it'll save on our end and we will be providing this feedback out so that you can all see it later on after we gather all of your responses here tonight. So this gives us a good read on what people are feeling in terms of different trail features. And then on the following slide, we will ask a few more feature questions to just get an overall idea of how you're feeling in terms of different kinds of amenities and ideas along the trail. So I see we have about eight participants that have responded, so that's great. I'll give you all a few more, few more minutes to go ahead and do these responses. And again, ask any questions if you have anything that comes up. Right, looks like we're up to 11 people that have responded now. So I'll give you just a bit more time if anyone else wants to share their responses here before we move on to the next question. All right, I think we'll move on to the next one. If no one else is responding at the moment. So this, when I click to the next slide here, it will refresh on your screen and you'll see one more round of some additional features here. So you'll do the same thing here and rate them based on if you, if they're important to you or if they're not important to, important to you. So same as last time, you will slide these 
based on how you feel about them. Give you just a bit more time on this one. We got up to about 11 last time, so I'm holding out for at least two more of you, so I'll give you a little more time. All right, I think we'll keep moving along here. Oh, one more we got, one more. I'll wait, I'll wait just another minute. <laughs> Okay, so our next question here is a bit different than the two that we started off with. And what we, what we want you to do with this question is to share what values you think should be guiding the TART Bayfront Trail Improvement and Extension Project. So this will allow you to enter up to five different values that you think are prevalent and should be at the forefront of this project effort. So as you type those in, they'll show up on the screen here for the group to see. and the themes that come up more frequently will show up larger. And again, this is all information that we can capture and we will hold on to as we continue to move forward with the designs. So just some ideas that may come to mind would be values such as safety. I know that's a big value that a lot of people have shared and values such as environmental quality and how you wanna feel when you're on the trail. So just to get you thinking, but this can be anything that feels right to you in terms of what this project should look like. So we want you to go ahead and share what your values are for the project. Whoever started us off here did a great job of sharing some ideas for what these values could look like. So great work and Everybody keep on sharing. I think these are great so far and they definitely resonate with the comments that we received from the public throughout our engagement efforts so far. So it's good to know that you're in agreement of the values of what other people have voiced as well and what we've been trying to work towards in our design process so far. So 
these are great, great options that you are mentioning here. Yeah, you all are doing a great job with this and these are strong values for us to build from and keep at the forefront of our minds when we're moving forward with this project and really use them to guide where this takes us in the future. So thank you for sharing these. These are great. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes um, just since this one does take a bit more thought. It asks for a few more responses. So I'll leave a bit more time here so we can capture the rest of your values before we move on to the next. All right, if no one else has any typing left to do, I think we'll move on to our next question. So for this next one, what we're gonna do is we've essentially broken the project portions up into segments that we hope to get to five different segments. So what those will do is we hope to get feedback from you all on those specific sections. And we wanna know first and foremost, what portions of the project are you most excited about and why? So I do believe there should be, um, as we move into the next questions, those segments will be laid out a bit more clearly. But what we wanna do here is we want for you to go ahead and choose from the five different segments that are laid out they're written out here as division to clinch and then clinch to Murchie Bridge, Murchie Bridge to the Senior Center, the Senior Center to Peninsula, and then Peninsula Drive. So those are the sections that we're referencing here. And overall, we want to know which ones are most exciting to you, what meaning do they have to you, and mm -hmm. what ones are your favorite in general. So here is where you can share which portions are your favorite and why. And this one we do expect to take a bit more time. So feel free to put any questions you have in the chat and we'll give you a moment to share all your thoughts here. So we'll reconvene in about four or five minutes.
And if you have ideas come to mind that are different from some of those sections, we're still open to hearing what your thoughts are on those. So this can be personalized to how you break down the sections or what you feel as well. But we wanted to guide you with these five segments just as focus points for what the different portions are. But feel free to talk about even more specified sections or to build off of these sections that we've proposed. I do see a comment here about division to clinch and that maybe you were on the wrong link there, but this I do want to mention that this meeting will be recorded and provided on the website for you to go back through and watch and take a look at in the future. So if you missed anything or would like to go back and see the refined concepts that were shared today, we will have this recorded meeting available for you within the coming days. This question, just to keep in mind, is very helpful as this is a large project and we want to know focus points that mean the most to you all. So sharing what those are will be very helpful for us as we move forward with getting the project really going and where we can make change first based on areas that are most important to you and what we're able to achieve. Yeah, this is great feedback and you were all definitely getting the hang of how to use Mentimeter. So you're doing a great job. Yeah. And we do see some um, comments, you know, going out of our scope of project to center uh, drive on the peninsula. And that is not going unnoticed. Uh, I do want to acknowledge that the city does have plans in TART and we're working with the neighboring uh, Peninsula Township as well about future connectivity opportunities. So it is in the realm um, of things to come, but it's not a part of this project um, focus. I'll give everyone about another minute here to put the rest of your thoughts out. All right, I think we'll move on to our next question. So as I mentioned, what these next five questions will do is for each of those sections that we showed to you in the previous slide, we wanna know specifically what you want your experience to be like in these different portions. So that can look very different to each and every one of you and we wanna hear all of those ideas. So in this, we've included an aerial showing what this stretch would be just to give you an idea. But we wanna know in this division to clinch park portion of the trail, what exactly would you like that experience to be like? 
And as I said, that can be a lot of different things. So really whatever that means to you, we wanna hear if connections to the waterfront, views of the water, connections to other areas, environmental quality, safety, anything like that, we wanna know what experience you wanna have in these portions. So we'll start off here with the division to clinch portion of the trail, which is our westernmost point of the project. Seeing a lot of comments that we can use to build upon some of the previous comments we received last month with utilizing the trees in the area as nice shady spots for you to pull over and enjoy the bay and have connection to the water there. So I'm definitely seeing some similar themes come up here. All right, I think we'll move along to our next section. So this will be doing the exact same thing, but we're asking instead what experience you'd like to have in moving east from the Clinch Park start to the Murchie Bridge. So this will be that stretch between Clinch Park and Murchie Bridge. So we wanna know again, what experience you would like to have in this area. And hopefully the aerial provided helps you get a feel for what this portion is if you can't picture it right off the top of your head. But again, if you have any questions of what was proposed here or things of that sort, we're happy to answer those. And we do understand that it's likely that experiences that are valued may be similar for different segments of the trail, but separating, separating it into these segments helps us narrow it down just that much more. So don't hesitate to put down similar things or to get super specific on these different portions.
give everyone just a bit more time here, but great comments, some exciting ideas. I'm seeing some about binocular stations and really honing in on enhancing the ability to enjoy the view, which I think is obviously a special portion of this project is that the bay really is our most important feature that we have here. And obviously lots of other things as well, but I think it makes a lot of sense to emphasize enjoying that incredible feature that we already have there. So it's nice to see comments like that. Thoughts about separation being very important as well. All right, I think we'll move on to our next portion now. So continuing east, we are moving from the new segment here will be Murchie Bridge to the Senior Center. So this is where we have that shared use pathway starting. We traverse through the Delamar parking lot and moving into an additional end of that will result in shared use again as we weave through those trees in front of the Senior Center. So just to give you a picture of what this segment is but again we just want to know what a good experience looks like to each of you in this segment And again, these comments can be in reference to amenities that you may feel are a good idea as well and how you'd like to be able to experience those or just the prime features of these different areas that mean a lot to you and you'd like to have their experience enhanced or a new experience created in this segment. Seeing some resounding themes of safety being extremely important in this area, which we definitely agree. And I think that's something that this design will be able to really enhance in this area by pulling us away from the street a bit and enhancing the safety of the trail there with things such as smooth surfaces, as someone mentioned here, safety away from the cars and the trucks, and really the idea of getting us as far away from the street as possible, I think will be really helpful in this portion. I like the idea too of that there's some good public beaches in this section and maybe providing access and racks to those areas for bikes to park. I think that's a great idea. All right, no one is typing anything else right now. I think we'll go on to the next slide. So 
So moving along, we're almost to the end as we head east here, but approaching the end of our project scope, we wanna know, again, the experience that you'd like to see here for the Senior Center to Peninsula Drive. So it's a bit of a shorter segment here, but again, starting with those trees and the shared use path out in front of the Senior Center as we move eastward towards Peninsula Drive. So again, as you all have been doing great, we wanna know what you'd like to see, experience, and feel in this area as you use the proposed trail. Again, great comments about you all, and we're seeing safety as a huge portion of this area, as it is along the whole trail, but again, really, really working to make that safety be felt here in this area, I think will be very important. Um, one thing we should mention is we are working with city staff uh, maintenance crews and parks and rec maintenance crews, and so we're talking about how to improve the year-round experience, especially snow removal in the winter time and how that gets addressed. So those are definitely some challenges and we understand it's not a perfect system. When does the road get plowed versus trails, especially if they're pushed up closer to the road, but it's something that we're working through and thinking about as we continue throughout this design. So it's very nice and encouraging to see that uh, these are areas of concern and areas where we can hopefully have some good solutions for. All right, keep moving along. We're almost to the end of this question segment. And then after this, we have one more interactive activity for you guys to do on another platform. So last question, you're all professionals of this by now is we wanna know what experience you'd like to have along Peninsula Drive, which I do think will tie into a lot of what has been said before, but we wanna specifically ask for a Peninsula as well.
It's great that our first respondent here shared what, I'm um, sorry, which alternative option they like the best because that is feedback that we'd love to hear from you all since the Peninsula project portions that we shared today are new ideas that we're presenting to you. So definitely let us know how you feel about those and how that ties into how you want the experience to be. I wanted to mention that we also do note that when we work through implementing this trail down peninsula, it'll be a unique approach in that we'll be working with the different residents that live along the drive to make sure that we're keeping them feeling safe and keeping the new users of the trail feeling safe. So once we narrow down what we'll be doing here, communication with them is going to be very important and something that will be unique and help us shape the project based on the residents that are there, especially since there are a lot of driveways that are in the right of way and just some different things for us to work around. So wanted to note that as well. Right, and last month we shared that for MDOT section of Peninsula, they did a safety audit. And so they identified areas of concern of uh, visual safety, site distance issues, concerns, as well as crossings and intersections. So peninsula, the South Peninsula Drive intersection, the Eastern intersection, as well as the North Peninsula North Drive, um, as you get closer to Center Road, uh, were all areas identified. And so whether it's addressed as part of our project or as part of MDOT's future road project, those have been identified. So it's good to hear that what they identified is also be, being reflected with you all as part of the users. Um, you see these areas of concern, and so those are what we're trying to um, improve. Okay, we'll move on here. This is the next and final portion of our activity for tonight. So what we'll have you do now is I want you to go ahead and click on this link. You'll be able to click on it right on your screen from this website that you're on. And it'll take you to a website called Mural. And if you joined us last month or if you've had experience using this tool based on what the city shared for you to interact with after our meetings from last month, this will be the same thing, but with a bit of a different spin on it for our activity this month. So go ahead and click on that link and it will take you over to our mural board. And this mural board, once everybody's on here, I will go ahead and explain it a bit more just so you know what the goal is here and how to go ahead and put your comments down. So I'll give everybody a bit more time to click on that link and come over into our mural board here. You're welcome to type your name in when it prompts you when you enter here or you don't have to. But as people are joining, I will go ahead and start explaining just a bit. And how this board works is you will click down on your mouse or whatever tool you're using on your device here, you'll click down and drag. So that's how you're able to move down along the trail. So we have it laid out going from west to east and you'll follow this all the way from the westernmost portion at West End Beach parking lot down to the end of Peninsula at Eastern. So you'll just drag and move along the trail 
But the question that we're asking here, and you can see this on the left, the left side of this board, is what you're going to do is you'll use these numbered stickers, one through three, and we want you to pick your top three favorite portions of this proposed trail. So you'll go ahead, and I have these stickers provided throughout the entirety of this stretch of the whole project trail. So if you can see my screen over here, you can just go ahead and grab the number and place it down on the map. And one will show that that's your top favorite portion of the trail, two is second favorite, and then three will be your third favorite. And then along with these numbers that you drag on to different portions of the trail, I want you to go ahead and as I showed in my example here, so just an example, but along with that one, you would take the orange sticky note, place it next to your one, and tell us the why of what makes that your favorite portion of the trail project. So feel free as you go along, similar to our mural last month, you're welcome to leave other notes or ideas that come up. But the purpose of this specific activity is we want to see overall what the public is thinking of, what areas of this trail project are your favorite, what are you most excited about, and we want you to rate them first, second, and third, essentially. So go ahead and drag and drop the stickers, drab and drab and drag this, drab and drag. Grab and drop the sticky notes and share why the portions are your favorites and what you're excited about. So again, this is our final activity for tonight. So we have about 12 minutes left in our meeting and we'd love to give you time here to think about your answers, place your stickers, and then we will reconvene and let you know our final steps as you move forward. But for this time, we'll let you go ahead and place your stickers. And this is a long stretch, so if you wanna get from one end to the other, you will be scrolling for a second, but I think this will be good to see it laid out in this long stretch. And let us know if you have any questions.
I'll give everyone about about five more minutes in here to finish letting us know what your favorite portions are. And then we'll reconvene and let you know what next steps will look like. So please continue to leave all of your thoughts. And just as a reminder, this link will remain open after the fact. So any ideas that come to you later or in the coming days, we'd love for you to come back to this link and share those thoughts on here. Also, uh, I'm going to drop in the Zoom chat the uh, city's TART Trail website that gives you up-to-date information on status of this design process. So you can always go back and look at last month's public engagement uh, recordings and information and upcoming dates of next engagement and those kind of things. So again, in the next few days, as we get wrap up this round of public engagement, you will see that posted on the website as well. And they'll also have the link to the mural, mural as well so that you can continue to provide comments if you didn't get a chance to get them all in tonight. All right, as all of you continue to share your thoughts in here, I'm just going to pull up our project timeline and start talking through where we're at now and where we're heading as we move forward. So again, feel free to continue adding thoughts in here even after this meeting. But for now, just to make sure we respect your time for this evening, we're going to go back over to that Mentimeter link. So hopping back to the website that we run right before this, you'll click back there. And then moving along, if everybody can see this slide here, this is our project timeline. So you can see that we kicked off the project back in January. Last month was when we had our focus group meetings that we shared with those four groups, and then our in-person and virtual events that we had. And here we are tonight. This is our first of our March events. So this is our virtual event. And then tomorrow we will be in Traverse City to meet in person. So we would love to see you all there or you're welcome to share your thoughts online. But again, we wanna spread the word and have as much input, input as possible. So that will be our goal for our March events coming up tomorrow. So moving forward from those where we get your feedback on the refined concepts that we presented, we'll be really working to finalize the plans through April and May because June is when we have grant submittal opportunities coming up. 
And in order to implement all of your great ideas and make the trail as great as possible, grants are going to be extremely helpful. So we want to focus all of our efforts on getting as many as we can and having those plans finalized to increase our grant opportunities. And then from there, trail construction and improvement is to be determined at this point as we work to achieve grants and finalize the plans. But this gives you a run through of what the coming months will look like. And that brings us to the end of our meeting for tonight. So thank you all so much for joining us. And again, your involvement and feedback really is valued and it's helping guide these plans as you're the user and we wanna make this as great for you all as we possibly can. So it's very helpful hearing your thoughts and we hope to continue to connect to you either via email or if you wanna continue in the mural link. And for those of you who'd like to come see us tomorrow when we're in town, that would be great. So please spread the word and continue sharing your feedback. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you all.